I'm the operations manager for the Dartmouth Steam Railway. Uh, so I've been here since 2012. So I started off when I was very, very short. I uh, started off in the ticket office. Uh, later became onto the train, so doing actually ticket inspecting, guard, and then moved up to the duty manager, and then finally got the operations manager role. You start running trains in February for the half term, but only a part-time service, so a couple of days a week. Uh, carry that on into March, and then from April we go every day until end of October. And within that, during the kind of June, July, August, September months, we've got two train service midweek, and it dies down to one train service in October. November we're closed to most of it, apart from the last week when we start our train lights operations. So that's the Christmas time um, event where we wrap the train in lots of rope lights, line side displays, and we run that for about six weeks in the winter. Uh, so the busiest time for us is obviously the summer months, so the six weeks are crucial to our business, so the kids are off in summer, and also the winter period where the train lights operate is quite a, um, it's a, uh, also a key factor for us as well, it just gives that extra revenue over the winter, so it can change, but the summer is definitely the most busiest and crucial part of the year. So my name is Martin Bellamy, I am the guard and the signaller here on the Dartmouth Steam Railway. Um, role is, as the title say, responsibility for the guard at least is uh, in charge of the safe running of the train. The uh, role of signaller, a completely different role, uh, is the safe operation and the running of the train within the, along the, the line. I started working here on the railway in 2007. I, um, you start off being a ticket inspector, so it's not the same amount of responsibility. Uh, so you, you learn the basics of the, uh, the job of looking after passengers. You then take on the responsible role of, of the guard once you're passed out. In my case, that was about two, two and a half years later. As far as signaller is concerned, I started training on that about five years ago and I've been doing it for about the last four years. My name is Barry. Uh, I'm a driver on the Dartmouth Steam Railway. I drive the trains between Paynton and Kingswear. I've been here 24 years altogether now. Yeah, so I've uh, been up and down a few times. As a, as a driver here, um, you get to drive both steam and diesel. Um, Obviously, being a steam railway, it's primarily steam, but diesels do have their, their sort of place for other jobs. Um, sometimes, if a steam engine fails, you might need to use a diesel, so that sort of thing crops up. So, yeah, we, we get to drive both uh, both forms. We have six steam engines altogether on the company now. Two basic roles on a, on a typical day. Um, one is your uh, prep side of the loco where you will come in and basically get the locomotive ready for the day so that is typically for us we start at six o'clock in the morning and we will come along prepare the loco raise steam oil it clean it um, cold water on board and hand over to the day crew and then if you're a day crew um, as a driver you're you, you will take over prior to the departure, uh, typically at 10 or 10.30, and look after the loco for the day. To get the locomotive ready for uh, the, the, the first departure of the day, we allow uh, at least four hours, but that's as long as it's already warm from the previous day. Um, if an engine has been out of service for whatever reason, then it's usually warmed up the day before, so it's sort of a 24 hour warm up then. The journey uh, distance between Paynton and Kingsbury is seven miles, and time wise, that typically takes around 25 minutes. All right, my name's Jack Burnett. I'm a carriage fitter here at the Dartmouth Steam Railway, so my primary job is looking after the, uh, the maintenance um, and the refurbishment of the, of the passenger carriages that take our passengers to and from Paynton and Kingsway. So I spent spent a little bit of time on, on the engines, about, about a year, um, which is where I initially 
built up my basic skills um, in the workplace, um, getting used to the to the railway environment, how the company works, um, and then came to the carriage department to to learn the specific um, skills needed to maintain uh, and also the, the refurbishment and rebuilding of the carriages. Typical day for a carriage fitter, we um, will come in in the morning and our first job is to check if we've had any any defects or reports from the train crews to see if any of the carriages have, have got any small intermittent faults that we need to address first thing in the morning before train services commence. Um, if there's no uh, any defects or, or any sort of running repairs that we need to do, um, we then focus on, on the main main part of the job which is the, the refurbishment and overhaul of the carriages. Um, we always have a carriage in the workshop for, for a major rebuild. We tend to to rebuild them or do um, major uh, refurbishment work on them every every 10 years or so um, and we also during the winter period as well um, do all the annual servicing as well um, so really depending on the time of the year will depend on the structure of the day but commonly whilst whilst we're open the morning is is any running repairs and then we spend the rest of the day doing the, the refurbished work on whatever carriage we've got in the workshop. <laughs> I'm Serenity Damon and my job role here at the Dartmouth Steam Railway is sales and marketing and I've been here since 1992. My granddad Bob Saunders um, who formed the company um, so back in 1992 he was the one um, who sort of said you know come along and have a look at what we're doing here around the company and then before I know it I've been here for 31 years. The day in the life of a marketing manager. Um, so for me obviously not being in the office anymore and out on the road it, it it's just it's it's non-stop and I think you can never getting the message out to people um, about this a wonderful attraction that we have um, is it's not just the steam train obviously we've got the you know the boat trips Totnes to Dartmouth um, we've got our wonderful boats that go from Torquay to Brixham. We've got the boat trips going from Torquay to Dartmouth. There is so, so much to promote. Um, and in the southwest, we do ha actually have a lot of attractions here in this small area, actually, of Torbay. Um, so it's just getting out there and getting that message across that what a beautiful day to come and spend with us on all our, um, all our trips that we do. So this wonderful company and what I've witnessed, especially over my sort of my my years here, but since we started in 1973, it's been incredible. Um, so yeah, way back in the day, it would have been just the steam train and that little ferry crossing from Kingsway to Dartmouth. Um, but over those years, it's been brilliant to watch and witness where we've purchased the boats um, going from Dartmouth up to Totnes. We've purchased the boats from Torquay to Brixham and Torquay to Dartmouth. We purchased our own set of buses as well, because that then completes the fantastic round robin trip that we run, which is the steam train Payton to Kingsway, ferry to Dartmouth, a boat cruise from Dartmouth up to Totnes, and then a bus from Totnes back to Paynton. So you've got that full round robin trip. Um, so that was great then to have our own buses in, because back in the day, that element would have been with Western, Western National. Um, so having all that has been brilliant. And then we also look after the Kingsway Castle Paddle Steamer for the Paddle Steamer Preservation Society. And that wonderful ship runs on a one hour cruise in Dartmouth. She is stunning. Um, so that's so, so lovely that we're obviously looking after that for, for lots and lots more years, which is great. But yeah, just to see this company grow as to sort of where we are today has been incredible. And we're very lucky as well is that we have, um, there are only two in the world and we have one of them, which is the Devon Bell Observation Saloon, which is a wonderful carriage. Uh, it's an all glass saloon. So it gives you that fantastic panoramic view of when you are journeying on our seven mile piece of stunning track um, so we're really really lucky to have that carriage with us here at our railway so the christmas train of lights uh, which our first one was in 2018 so it was at a marketing meeting back in 2017 um, that we were having a little chat about, okay, let's go away, have a little think about something we can do. That's how it began. The 2018 Train of Lights was the first one 
actually in the in the UK and sort of worldwide. This was the first where you've got a narration on board. And then when you're looking out of the windows, those line side features are then marrying up with the story that has been told to you. Um, I'm very, very proud. I know myself and my colleague are really, really proud of sort of where we are today with it because it's grown and grown and grown to the numbers that we carry um, today. And I think it was about 23,000 people um, that journeyed in that one month last year for our train of lights. So incredibly proud, proud of what we have, uh, what we've created. The train of lights, like I said, is still sort of very new to us because each year it's going to grow and grow as well because you can build on that narration. A couple of years later, there were a few heritage railways in the UK that are now doing it today. Um, they've got their own take on it. They don't call it train of lights. Um, they've got their own sort of names for it. Um, and I look at that actually with, with pr I'm very, very, very proud. Um, so yes, there are a few that do, that do do their own version of the train of lights now. My name's Peter Roach. I um, have been employed with the company now for 45 years full time but I've been involved with the railway for 50 years. The company started in 1973. I did the voluntary and the seasonal work for five years. It was 1978 that I started full time on the books. So at the end of the operating season in 1978 I joined the company full time as an apprentice fitter. I was an apprentice fitter, a fireman, boiler smith, driver, <coughs> workshop controller, operating manager, guard, apprentice trainer, and booking clerk. So we're up to 10 different roles within the company now. I am still qualified to drive. I am qualified to guard the train. But my day-to-day -day role now is in the booking hall, selling tickets, talking to customers, encouraging them to buy tickets if they haven't, and sorting out that you know they have a great day and explain what they can expect through the day. The history of the railway, the actual railway reached Paynton in 1859. Brunel was engaged as the engineer to survey the line from Torquay, which is now called Tor Station, to survey through from Tor, through what is now Torquay, along through Livermead, through Paynton, off to Churston and down to um, Dartmouth. Unfortunately, Dartmouth was never going to happen as the river is a navigable waterway and although folklore says it's the landowners on the Dartmouth side at Greenway that wouldn't sell it was the navy that put the end to it the, the ships of the day the tall masted um, warships they would have had to negotiate under a bridge so it was the navy that stopped it and so it was always planned that this railway would go through to Kingsweir so Brunel was um, engaged to engineer it and he oversaw the beginnings of the railway that it started working from Tor down towards what is today Torquay and towards Paynton with the railway reaching Paynton in 1859 coinciding the year that Brunel also sadly died. So the Dartmouth and Tor Bay Railway uh, um, run by Charles Seal Hain, engaged Robert Brereton, who was Brunel's understudy, to be the chief engineer to take the railway through to Kingswear. Brunel's budget was very frugal, and the company actually ran out of money when it got to Brixham Road now called Churston, and they had to raise further funds to enable the railway to get through to Kingswear. But Kingswear they did get to, reaching it on this August the 16th, 1864. The railway 
was opened by the Dartmouth and Torbay Steam Railway Company, but it was operated right from the outset by the South Devon Railway Company. Built to Brunel's broad gauge, it was then modified to the standard gauge over one weekend. The whole Great Western Railway was re-gauged down to standard gauge over one weekend, an incredible feat. The South Den Railway was amalgamated into the Great Western Railway, and so it operated as the Great Western Railway. So you could get a ticket anyway from any station in the country through with the Great Western, let's, let's say down from Paddington to Dartmouth. Although the railway ended in Kingswear, Dartmouth was the historic important port they wanted to get to. And so right from the outset, the ferry operated across the river from Kingswear to Dartmouth was owned and operated by the railway company. So on the Dartmouth side of the river, you had a railway station, Dartmouth Railway Station, unique because it never saw a train. It had a station master, it had porters, luggage facilities, ticket office. You could buy a ticket in Dartmouth to go anywhere in the country, but it never, ever saw a train. But because of its importance, the station master at Dartmouth was actually paid better than the station master in Kingswear. The railway operated with the Great Western Railway right through to 1948 when nationalisation saw the Big Four amalg amalgamated into British Railways and the railway operated through to Kingswear until the close of the summer season 1972. It escaped the beaching cuts in 1963, but the connecting branch from Churston to Brixton didn't, unfortunately, but the Kingswear branch survived until 1972. And so it was at the end of 72 that the Dark Valley Railway Association, which already ran the railway from uh, Ashburton, Buck for Slee, down to Totnes and back, went public to raise the funds to buy the railway down to Kingswear. And so the Dark Valley Railway Company was formed in 1972 and the now newly formed Torbay Steam Railway operated from the 1st of January 1973 going down to Kingswear. Initially, commuter trains were run. Uh, subsidised by the Devon County, and that's how I got involved. I went to school at Churston and was going to school on the steam trains. And by February of that year, I was doing my first bit of voluntary work. Favourite part of the current job it is probably still the favourite part of my job whenever I have been involved with the public, be it on the loco, on the train, in the booking hall. Children's questions. The questions that a child will ask are amazing. I will always have time for children's questions. They never questions trying to trip you up, make themselves look good. They want to know. Children's questions, still best part of the job. Mm -hmm.